Hey guys, it's Kaylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I have an Adobe XD design tutorial for you guys. This is going to be part two. We started designing this website that you see here in the last video and we're halfway through it. So in today's video, we're going to go ahead and add the last two sections to this design to go ahead and wrap this design project up. So let's go ahead, head over to Adobe XD and get started with today's tutorial. All right, so here we are. This is where we left off in part one. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the layout grid. So what we're gonna do first off is we're gonna select our artboard. So I'm just gonna grab the name and I'm gonna go into the height value and I'm going to add plus and then we're gonna add 1900 pixels to this. So the next section is gonna be fairly large. From here, we're gonna need some text. So I'm just gonna hold alt and I'm going to click and drag to create a duplicate and I'm just gonna release that here. So this is our heading one text. So we're gonna drop this down to our H2 text, which we don't actually have over here. So we're gonna do that together. So since this is a little large, we're gonna go ahead and drop it down to 50 point font. We're going to center this, and I'm also going to change the text here. So I'm just gonna paste that in. I'm going to center this to the artboard, and I'm gonna hold Alt with it selected, and I'm gonna hover over this gray rectangle and see what our spacing is. Let's drop this down to 200 pixels. Once we're done with that, we can hit the plus icon over here in the assets panel under character styles, double click on the name, and we'll just call this H2. And I'm gonna drag that below the H1 for some visual hierarchy here in my character styles. Below this, we're gonna need a button. So I'm just going to grab this one up here, hold alt and click and drag. And we're gonna put that 60 pixels below. And here I'm going to change this to case studies. Since we are scaling the buttons in this tutorial, I'm gonna hold alt with the text selected. We have 48 on each side, so let's go ahead and shrink that. And we're gonna try to get that down to 30 to match the button that we used up top. Also, just like the first tutorial, feel free to change all the text and make this design your own. Uh, so I'm talking about case studies here. So in this section, we're gonna have some cards here to display each one of the case studies, or they can select a button to view all of the case studies. So now let's start with the cards. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna drag out any shape. And here in the width, I'm going to set this to 430. And then we're gonna get the height at 505. We can set the border radius to 15 pixels to match the other rounded elements that we're using throughout our designs. And we're going to remove the border. For this, we're gonna need a drop shadow. And on this, I'm gonna paste in a bluish black color. This is 172941. Feel free to add that over here to your color swatch if you'd like. And for the shadow itself, we're gonna set the Y value to 17 to drop it down 17 points. And then for the blur, we're gonna increase that to 50. And since that's a little harsh, we're gonna go into the color and drag the opacity down to 10%. So I'm just going to hold Alt and create two duplicates from this middle one. Now we're gonna be using three different styled cards for this tutorial. So we're gonna go ahead and create one by one here from left to right. So starting with this one, we're going to have an image up top. So we're gonna grab another rectangle and here in the corner, we're just going to drag it out like so. For this, we're gonna set the height to 250 pixels and I'm going to remove the border. For now, I'm just going to apply a random fill color so we can see the element we're working with. And we're also going to need to select this icon right here, which is gonna let us set the border radius for each one of the top left and right corners to 15 and leave the bottom nice and cornered like that. For the card in the middle, we're going to duplicate this gray placeholder rectangle, but we're gonna increase the height of this. So in this one, we're just going to drag this down to about 370 pixels. For the third one, we're going to put a square. So I'm just gonna grab the rectangle tool and hold shift as I drag out a perfect square. And we'll set this to 215 by 215. For the square, I'm just going to apply the same temporary gray color we're using and remove the border. And for this, let's try 10 pixels for the border radius. I'm gonna center this up inside of the card and then I'm gonna move it down 10 pixels. So we're gonna put 155 space from the top and 135 from the bottom. So that it's not just perfectly centered. So now we have our image placeholders for each one of our cards set up. Let's go ahead and start with our typography. So on the first card here, just gonna type out some junk text and we're gonna set this to our H3, which is Open Sans 34 point font, bold, and we're going to align that to the left. Just gonna grab some text for now and just paste that in. So I'm gonna put this in the top left corner and I'm going to put 30 spacing from the top and on the left as well. Below this, we're going to have some body text. So I'm just gonna drag out a text area like that. 
And then we're going to set that to our body text, which is once again, our 17 point font, semi bold, open sans, and we're going to align that to the left as well. So I'm just gonna grab some text and paste that in. I'm gonna center this inside of the card just like that. So we're gonna drag this until it matches the text up here so that we have about 30 on each side so that it's technically centered. From here, we'll put the 17 spacing below. And so that is our typography for our first card. The second card, I'm just going to hold Alt and duplicate our heading, put it in the corner just like we did, and 30 spacing from the top and 30 from the left. Once we've done that, we're going to select the card here in the background and we're just gonna drag down until we get about 30 spacing on the top. So my card is 523 high. So now we're getting some variation in the card, which is nice. Then finally, I'm gonna hold Alt and drag over the text one more time. This time I'm going to center line it and I'm just gonna put SEO in for now. I'm gonna center this up on the card and instead of doing 30 spacing from the top, we're just gonna put this 30 from the top of this square. Then I'm going to grab the text here and make a duplicate. And for this one, we're going to center align the text and we're gonna put 30 spacing from the bottom of that square and that's going to be our third and final card layout. So now that all of our card templates are made, I'm gonna put these in a way that I think looks pretty good. So I have 50 spacing below the case study button and the top of the first card and I kind of staggered the cards a little bit just to make it look a little bit more organic instead of just having everything nice and structured, although my spacing is equal on the top and the bottom and on the left and the right of each of my cards. So now I've placed the cards in an order that I want them. And so now I'm gonna go through and put all the typography in. But before we do that, let's go ahead and change some of the colors of these rectangles. So I'm gonna select the first one and set it to red. And we're going to put an illustration here just like we did up here with the cards. So this is going to be the background for that illustration. So I'm gonna do red and this one's going to be blue. We'll put one yellow here. We'll put another blue one there and so on throughout the design just like that. So now I'm going to add in my illustrations and my typography that's gonna be final for this section. Once again, I'm going to use the Humans Illustration Library. We used that in the first video. If you missed that, I'm also gonna have a link to that down in the description. It's a great free to use library. And I'm also going to use that and some shapes to create all of these cards. I'm creating some of them with just shapes so that it splits up the content so not all of the cards look exactly the same. Now that I have all of my cards laid out the way I want them and they're all finished, now we're going to select the artboard one final time to add the last section of this design, the call to action. So I'm going to go up to the height value once more and I'm going to add plus and we're going to do 800. So down here at the bottom, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and from the bottom left corner, I'm just going to drag out a rectangle and set the height to 800. And we're going to fill that with our maroonish red color that we're using. For the call to action, we want the text to be nice and large. So I'm going to go up to the top and I'm just going to grab this entire content section, the button, the body text, and the heading. So I'm gonna hold Alt and create a duplicate of that and just release that down here at the bottom. Command Shift right square bracket key will bring that all the way to the front. So that it doesn't look exactly the same as above, I'm going to delete the line that we're using here and I'm going to push this over to this left guideline. So this text obviously isn't working here, so we're going to change this to white. And for the body text, I'm gonna drag that down to 70% opacity, so that when we set the heading text to white, it doesn't look exactly the same and it doesn't clash together, so there is a little bit of separation there. I'm going to add in some text here. Just gonna copy and paste each of those in. For the button, we're going to change this to start a project. And once again, we want about 30 spacing on each side from our typography. And finally, on the right-hand side, I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to actually grab one of these groupings here. So I'm just gonna hold Alt and create a duplicate and I'll just drag that down here. Once again, Command Shift, right square bracket key to bring that all the way onto the top. So I'm going to center this with the rectangle and I'm gonna to touch the right side of this grouping to this line right here. So I'm going to actually ungroup this with Command Shift G. And here inside of the typography, I'm gonna set this to yellow. And I'm gonna change the numbers to 1,198. Then going to grab some text and paste that in. And we're going to change the fill 
to white. Finally, the last thing we need to do here for this section and the entire design is change this card. That way it doesn't match the same one above. So I'm going to select it, Command Shift G to ungroup it. I'm going to drag this out of the way and just delete it. So I'm gonna paste in one more illustration and I'm just gonna put this here in the corner, somewhere like that, copy and paste that. So with that selected, I'm going to grab my illustration and Command Shift M to mask that with shape. And there we have our card done. And that also wraps up our entire landing page design. So that is the tutorial now completed. That is the end of part two. This is our completed website that you see right here. I hope you guys enjoyed designing that with me. Again, if you have any questions related to this tutorial or anything you wanna ask me, let me know down in the comments below. I usually answer comments for about the first hour or two of a video. I'll obviously come back and try to answer stuff I missed after that at a later time. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more design related content. Make sure you have that notification bell on so you don't miss a video. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.